All righty. We have a bit of a history lesson to get into. Uh, this is going to be a fun one, and uh, not for not for great reasons. Uh, but if you don't know who Chris Rufo is, and what he's going to be doing next, then uh, you're you're probably going to know. There we go. Now we are at the first piece of fan art. This one is done from Taylor Allen. No context other than just saying more goths. So we have a goth Surus and a goth Raz fan art here. For those who don't know, Taylor Allen is also the responsible, uh, the artist responsible for the original uh, design of the Autumn model. So for those who enjoyed that model, this is the artist you have to thank for the original design. And then, of course, we're mixing for creating the model itself. Also, Ashio, thank you for redeeming your points for an Ara Ara Armistice. Now, every single redeem for the next hour is going to be converted into an Ara Ara. Also, Derico, I had to get yours anyway. Ara Ara, you fucking degenerate. The next one we have uh, that may or may not potentially be its own model at some point is... One from Toasty.Devil. They said, hi, I'm new here. Uh, here's something I started literally like a month ago and forgot about till now. Background got sloppy because I just wanted to finish. Even if you think the background is sloppy, I think it looks fan-fucking-tastic. It is just a badass version of my character just stepping on the fucking coin from Crypto Land. A newbie in the Fox, thank you for redeeming your points, friend. Ada, ada, you fucking monster. So this is amazing. It is. Fuck that coin. The last one we have is from Axo that has cream. Tried oil markers for the first time, and Cirrus is kind of my go-to for new art stuff. I feel honored that I am a go-to for anybody's anything, much less their art stuff. Thank you very, very much. I appreciate this greatly. If you want your fan art to be shown in a future video, the best way to do so is to drop it into the fan art section of the Discord. With that said, if you have not subscribed already, if you haven't hit the bell icon, like button, all that other fun stuff, maybe consider doing so. And also, if you haven't checked out my Patreon yet, I have not been very good about uploading videos to the Patreon this month um, because there have been a lot of stuff going on, but I will be posting some internal update stuff over on Patreon here in a bit I'm sorry <laughs> for everybody who's over at Patreon waiting for, for background updates. Uh, but, 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 with that said, let's go ahead and get into things. So we got to talk about this guy. This guy right here. This person right here is Chris Rufo. Now, if you don't know who he is, that's completely understandable. Let's go ahead and do a quick primer on him. So this guy... Uh, born in 1984, is a, an American conservative activist. He's a senior fellow at the Manhattan Institute. But what he's mostly known for is his activism against critical race theory, which he claims has pervaded every aspect of the federal government and poses an existential threat to the United States and is therefore anti-American. He's also been involved in several Republican efforts uh, to restrict CRT uh, in, in education, so like all the stuff that's happened in Florida with trying to get the CRT out of math, that's, that's his stuff. He's also opposed to LGBTQ education in school, often claiming that public school teachers are sexual abusers of children. Educators and investigative journalists have argued that Rufo has made such claims as part of an effort to provoke distrust toward public schools and in order to promote school choice and private education, which of course... Private education would mean more money lining the pockets of private schools. But we've got all that information out. But now I want to talk about another person. Now that I've given you a primer on Chris Rufo, said CRT isn't in math. You're right. It's not. But for some reason, uh, DeSantis believes it is. Conservative activist. He's like a door-to-door -door Kirby vacuum salesman. I think mean, that's, that's the same thing, really. So, now while that may sound 
Like, it's the n same thing that's happened everywhere else. Uh, like, we've seen Matt Walsh talking about this shit. We've seen, you know, we've seen pretty much everybody talking about CRT for the last bit. However, did you know that the person who primarily spearheaded the anti-critical race theory campaign was Chris Rufo. In fact, actually, let's go ahead and take a look at one of his tweets from before. We have successfully frozen their brand, critical race theory, into the public conversation and are steadily driving up negative perceptions. We will eventually turn it toxic as we put all the various cultural insanities under that brand category. The goal is to have the public read something crazy in the newspaper and immediately think critical race theory. We have decodified the term and will recodify it to annex the entire range of cultural constructions that are unpopular with Americans. This was from a year ago. It's him. If you want somebody to blame for all of the CRT nonsense, like the, the, the vitriol against something that conservatives don't seem to understand at all, here are your alarm bells. Christopher Rufo is the one responsible for most of this. You may wonder why our cultural zeitgeist had shifted so quickly into the conversation about CRT being a thing, how that meme even began. It was him. And unfortunately, we have another one coming up. So you're right. Originally, we had the CRT discourse, and that's been going on for a while, but it's about to dial up. It's about to get a little worse. Let's go ahead and check his uh, his Twitter for more information. Tomorrow, I'll be publishing my first report in a new series on gender ideology in K-12 schools. My goal is to publish one story per week for six weeks, establishing the frame, driving multiple news cycles, and generating 500 million media impressions. Get ready to rumble. And of course, people asking, uh, what's your time frame look for generating 500 million impressions? And he thinks they'll be able to get there in about 90 days. If the CRT campaign is anything to go off of, he will. Things are about to get a lot worse. Do you want to know why the groomer terminology has started to just purvey itself more and more in your lexicon right now? Because people like Chris, people like Chris Rufo, are putting that word into the public sphere to be recodified. You see, when you thought of a groomer 10 years ago, you thought of somebody abusing children. But now when you think of a groomer, uh, at least for a brief second, the image of a trans person flips into the mind. Even if you yourself do not believe that trans people are groomers, when you hear the word groomer, there is at least a mild association now. Because people like Matt Walsh, Ben Shapiro, and then of course the originator for a lot of this stuff, Chris Rufo, have been pushing for that for a while. It is a forced measure to change the way that we think of language. It's a misinformation campaign. And of course, a new one has been launched by him. It's going to make things a lot uglier. It's going to make things a lot worse. And here's the thing. It's mostly going to be targeting teachers. Remember the bit we said before, he's a conservative activist, and he's got two angles of attack right now, and they've all been about the education system. Make public education completely and totally swamped with the ideas that it's a cesspool of CRT and gender education? And then you've got this. Now, let's take a look at the actual stuff that he has put up. We know for a fact that when he does his research, he's not doing it to try to come to an actual scientific conclusion. He's doing it to demonize. He is trying with all of his might when he does this to harm educators. And by doing so, it ends up harming pretty much anybody 
who happens to be mildly associated with the things those educators are talking about. So if you can demonize educators and pub, uh, public education with the CRT nonsense, then anybody who starts talking about racial injustice gets lumped into that category. Now, not only did your primary target get hit, but everything else starts to follow from there. So when you start calling everybody groomers, now people who are not actually harming children are being lumped into that conversation. But remember the groomer discourse. Because that's his target. Published two days ago, the titling reads, At least 181 K-12 educators ch uh, charged with child sex crimes in the first half of 2022. 140 of the arrests, or 77%, involved alleged sex crimes against students. Now, whether the information itself is true isn't really the conversation that needs to be being had right now. Because we know that the conversation is being thrown out in uh, through a particular frame. As an example, I was on a friend's stream recently, and we were talking about Planned Parenthood, and a person in their chat mentioned uh, that the person who began Planned Parenthood was actually a eugenicist with a lot of uh, you know racism and whose ideas actually got adopted by Hitler and the Third Reich. And it's one of those things where you go, even if that is true, throwing that information out you're doing it because you want a particular reaction. You are wanting somebody to go, huh, if that's true, then X bad. If person who began Planned Parenthood eugenicist, then Planned Parenthood bad. If Planned Parenthood bad, then abortion bad. If Planned Parenthood and abortion bad, then, well, you see how this goes. Now things that Planned Parenthood does that are not abortion, they get affected. Likewise, when you demonize public educators by going, aha, there's this high rate of uh, sexual abuse that happens in them, that may be true and that should be investigated. But why are you framing the information the way you are? What solution are you proposing? His solution is going to be going into private education, which of course costs a fuck ton of money and most people can't afford it. Or even doing homeschooling, which of course means that you will have private education firms sending books your way for it, which you also have to buy, which, you know, I grew up on A. Becca. I know how this works, and I know how this looks. I'd rather not deal with that shit. I don't want to deal with more people, uh, with unqualified people teaching them things about science that aren't fucking true. Christopher Rufo, a senior fellow at the Manhattan Institute, called for a new national study on child sex abuse in schools. He says this is a scandal that the political left is doing everything in its power to suppress. He says in a statement on Fox News Digital, the basic fact is incontrovertible. Every day a public school teacher is arrested, indicted, or convicted for child sex abuse. And yet, the teachers' unions and public school bureaucracies and the left-wing media pretend the abuse isn't happening and viciously attack families who raise concerns. Now, where has this been happening? Where has the left been viciously attacking people who point out that there are issues when it comes to assault of minors? I have not seen this. He then says it's time to take the problem seriously. I call on Congress to appropriate $25 million for a ch national study of child sex abuse in public schools so victims can finally get justice and parents can have greater confidence that schools will be safe for their children. Now, that sounds well and good. That sounds reasonable. My knee-jerk reaction to this is to go, yeah, of course, look into this. Find people who are going to harm children and stop them from harming children. But given that he is such a high proponent for private education, given that he fights for those firms, I would say that there's a bias there. The statement, make your public schools safer for the children, it sounds reasonable, and I want to agree with it. But knowing that there is a bias there towards the private education system specifically, 
which has all of the exact same problems? Yeah. I don't... I don't think I can... I don't think I can hear that statement without thinking about those biases. Kinderdoodle, thank you for redeeming your points for what has been converted thanks to the armistice into an... Uh, you fucking degenerate. But it goes on. It goes on. Let's look at what he did with critical race theory real quick to see about how this is going to end up fanning out. Let's take a look. This is a piece that he helped with called Responding to Social Justice Rhetoric, a cheat sheet for policymakers. Social justice, what they mean is group entitlement. Critical race theory, what they mean is the belief that European uh, people of European descent make society racist for their own benefit. Diversity, what they mean is an identity-based approach to society, including only those who agree with social justice. All of this is stuff to make it seem and make it very quick and easy for you to call people who advocate for social justice, let's go ahead and say the word, Nazis. When you read this language, it reads like you're trying to describe somebody who believes that the identity of their group is more important than the rights of other groups and would suppress the rights of other groups in the name of the identity of their own group. Something we have seen before and killed in World War II. When it says inclusion, they mean restricted speech and justification for purges. When we say accountability, they want policymakers to think we mean using institutional and social power to force compliance. When we say hate speech, we want them to think, or he want when he wants them to think, uh, an expression of opinion that the accuser finds objectionable. Have you ever wondered why? For the longest time, whenever somebody says the word hate speech, the immediate go-to knee-jerk reaction in public discourse has been, you say anything you don't agree with is hate speech, or you call anyone you don't agree with a Nazi. Those two things. Those two fun things. Do you want to know where those came from? Campaigns like this. This is how this stuff begins. The reason we find so many snappy uh, retorts, snappy statements when we talk about anything social justice related is because stuff like this that is meant to obfuscate is there. When you're a policymaker, you don't sometimes have time to deep dive into every little social issue that may come your way. So there are things that you can shortcut. Here, let me give you some shortcuts that work for the left pretty well. If somebody says 1488 or it's in their user handle, that person's probably a Nazi because the 14 is, an, is a way to say the 14 words without saying the 14 words and the 88 stands for Heil Hitler. That's a pretty common one. We kind of know that one. We've got a lot of dog whistles that we've learned over the years and as new ones constantly come out, we are constantly having to see which stage of euphemism we're on. But we get those cheat sheets. We learn over time that, okay, when somebody who is conservative says X, they might actually mean Y. Our brains are already coded to look for these shortcuts because as opposed to looking at that 1488 and thinking of every possible idea that that could mean, it's faster and usually more likely that we just have the one thing to think about. That's a very odd number you have in your username. I wonder what it possibly means. So, when you have a cheat sheet like this, you are taking those neural pathways, those things that the brain already does, that pattern recognition, and you are weaponizing it for your side. When I say environmental justice, I don't mean race issues, but apparently he wants us to believe that whenever somebody on the left says environmental justice, we're talking about race issues. 
If I say decolonization, which I don't tend to say much, I don't mean removing European influence. Uh, I, I have some bad news for everybody uh, who is identitarian of any kind. We're a mixed culture, and we operate better that way, in general. That's probably going to make people angry on even my side, too, but that's fine. I don't care. If I say microaggression, I don't mean small slights perceived as bigotry. I mean things that have actually chipped away at somebody's psyche. Things that actually harm someone bit by bit. Misgendering somebody can be a microaggression. It can be worse, but it can be a microaggression. That's not a small slight that is perceived as bigotry. In a lot of cases, that's just going to be bigotry. But this is a method to try to downplay those things. Oh, we have another word for it, and it's called gaslighting. Uh, Gengar666, thank you for redeeming your points, friend. Ah, da, ah, da. You fucking degenerate. So, now, there's other infographics like this that are used for all of this. Uh, question, question, if I were to tell you uh, that there's a lovely trend on YouTube called iceberg videos, would you believe me? I, I think you would, right? Like, did, most everybody knows there, there's, that there has been an iceberg trend on YouTube, and what I mean by that is the Super Mario 64 iceberg, where you have uh, a handful of things everybody knows about. Like, oh, okay, um, you've got basic things that most people know about that video game. Things like when rabbits will spawn so that you can get stars from them, backward long jumps, stuff like that. But then you chip down and you go further down into the iceberg, and you find things like the myth that every single Mario 64 cartridge is personalized to the person. Uh, Wario is hidden in one of them. Uh, hallucinations people have when playing the game at certain times of night. And icebergs are really fucking fun because it gives you the ability to see, like, the stuff that people... Like, all the myths surrounding a game. And you get to watch people exploring the myths around that thing. And it's extended well past video games. There's an everything iceberg. Hell, somebody somewhere on the internet has probably make a, uh, made a Thesaurus iceberg. And they're probably the person who knows more about my channel lore than I even remember. The person has forgotten more channel lore than I remember at this point. And has made an iceberg somewhere. I've never seen it, but who knows? It could be there. So, uh, if I showed you this infographic, the Education in America iceberg, would you believe that this is utilized? Of course, the tip of the iceberg, as the statement goes, most teachers and educators and administrators are well-intended and very hardworking. We see absence of God from schools, skyrocketing numbers of queer and trans school kids, wokeness, most students are less uh, students are less prepared for success in college and life pornographic books in school libraries if we go down in the iceberg apparently we're supposed to find that there's anti-american revisionist history that sounds like what people say CRT is. Many teachers duped into critical social justice aka Marxism via university schools of education. Little to no local control of education. Money is tied to Marxist-friendly agendas and entities. Social emotional learning injecting kids with Marxist critical race theory and gender theory, queer theory, i.e. wokeness. School boards and teachers unions compromi uh, compromised with Marxist and Marxist dupes. Mass data collection of kids' personal data, including emotional status and metadata from adaptive learning curricula for the purpose of AI analysis and behavior prediction for life. Hypersexualization of school kids through comprehensive sexuality education and pornographic books for those of uh, for the purpose of alienating them from their families or religions. 
making them more likely to be recruited for the woke communist revolution. Now, if all of that sounds like crazy batshit conspiracy theory, yeah, that's that's what it is. It's it's it, it's exactly that. It's crazy right wing conspiracy theory bullshit, but it's crazy right wing conspiracy theory bullshit that can be easily digested and then spat out on Fox News or on One American News Network or any anywhere really oh for those who don't know one american news network is actually uh, mostly populated by liberals who are just trying to get a fucking job and get by their bosses make them write blatant right-wing propaganda uh, but if you don't believe me the illuminati actually did a wonderful video going into the ins and outs of oan it's fun isn't it It's super fun. And now, of course, as we go from the education, the CRT, if as we go from that discourse, we then see that the next one, the, hey, if your child is in a public school, there's probably a predator right around the corner. Because, of course, that's getting disseminated around in Facebook groups. Illinois Parent Union. Now, of course, I'm not going to blame an entire profession on the sins of a few, like some educators have. But it's interesting, especially considering the stuff being pushed by our union. That's way too many for this perversion to be a coincidence. Is this new? And what happens when there's so much grooming going on in classrooms? Or has there always been this kind of abuse going on? These are the types of conversations that you tend to want when you are trying to push a propaganda campaign. Razor Sharp Gaming, thank you very much for cheering for the 100 bits. Said, is Epic Times still around? Oh, yeah. 100%, they're still around. They are still there doing their thing. So what does this mean? What does what all of this finally come down to? Well, what it means is, do you remember how pervasive the CRT discourse was and still is? The groomer discourse is about to get worse. It's about to get more toxic. It's about to become more pervasive because, of course, that is the intention. The idea is to take an entire group of ideas and people who are incredibly diverse and do not tend to have the systemic issues that are being thrown on them, and then actually throwing them all under the same umbrella of Marxist agenda wokest bullshit. And of course, this is going to ramp up more and more as we get closer to the, to the uh, general election. That's that's how these things tend to go. I don't know if anybody's really noticed that uh, a lot of these stories tend to seem to get more pervasive and worse the closer we get to election cycles. Uh, that's going to cause a bunch more anti-trans hate crimes. That's the idea. While the target is the education system for the purpose of making more people go into private education and likely, therefore, paying money into those private education systems and their books, the other side of that is that the collateral damage, the LGBTQ people who will happen to get hurt, uh, killed, um, in in just harmed in any way, shape, or form, that's collateral damage. A, a while ago, I made a point of saying that not all Republicans were evil. Not all conservatives were evil. And I still believe that. Here's the problem. When you have a person who is in a position like Chris Rufo, I'm perfectly fine using the term evil for someone like that because this is somebody that has an agenda. They are trying to push towards a particular end. They're not a random person who's going about their life and they're reminded every two to four years that, oh shit, that's right, I live in a republic, I'm supposed to you know, vote for a representative. That's your general average Joe Schmo. That person's probably not evil. But that person is the exact kind of dupe 
that Chris Rufo is targeting. If you are that kind of person who leans conservative and you don't really care too much about politics, you consider yourself somewhat apolitical, you're probably the type of person who will see the propaganda that Chris Rufo puts up and uncritically share it again on Facebook. And if you are that kind of person, I sincerely feel sorry for you because a propaganda campaign is working very, very hard and he's making no bones about it being a propaganda campaign. It's literally that. His exact words have been to publicly say, that's what it is, we have goals, we have an agenda, these are what they are. That agenda gets picked up by people like Ben Shapiro and Matt Walsh, who will not say they have an agenda, because their job is to make you feel like uh, they're just giving you the news or entertaining you, because you want to watch them own some of those liberals. And I know that, that uh, that's entertaining. I know. I used to consume a lot of anti-SJW content. I think my pipeline into atheist content might actually have begun with Leafy is here, oddly enough. I'm uncertain because I don't have the ability to read the YouTube algorithm. But I do know that what Chris Rufo is trying to do is get the public education system demonized. And any collateral damage that happens on the way, any minority racial groups that happen to be heard as a, as a result of this, uh, any LGBTQ people who happen to be heard as a result of this, he does not care. He doesn't. If he cared, he wouldn't be doing this. He will spotlight all of this uncritically because he knows that the audience who's going to consume this primarily are going to be equally uncritical. That's what he's betting on. But what do you think? Because there's a lot to digest here, and it's it feels really awkward when uh, the, the curtain is pulled. It's one thing to do the umpteenth response video to Ben Shapiro, but... It's another thing to actually see the guy behind the curtain. Before we go much further, I do want to give a very quick shout out to a user named Buttered Jorts uh, or at Veronica Kelly Mars. They compiled all this information up on Twitter, which made it a lot easier to do the research to do this video and this presentation. So I do want to do a quick thank you there. That helped a fuck ton. With that said, let me know your thoughts in the comment section below. If you enjoyed this video, consider heading over to the Patreon, maybe hitting the like button. That would be really awesome. Also, Davis TJ, thank you so much for the thousand bit cheer. Somehow, magically, we're in the middle of a hype train, and that's fucking great. Uh, Queezium, thank you very much for the tier one subscription as well. And with all that said... We're doomed? No, we're not doomed. Here's the thing. Propaganda campaigns happen because people know that if they don't do them, they will lose. Propaganda campaigns hurt us a shit ton. But they're also a good sign that the things that we believe, the things that we tend to advocate for, are largely more popular when we're being truthful. But as always, everyone, insert end of video tagline here. <laughs>